Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. Today, Harper, we are here to cook spaghetti alla bolognese. Oh, I love ragu alla bolognese. No, Harper. Spaghetti alla bolognese aren't with ragu. But it's alla bolognese. Eh, alla bolognese, sì, ma senza ragù, without ragù. Because spaghetti with ragù alla bolognese doesn't exist. We are going to cook the real spaghetti alla bolognese. That doesn't require meat. Okay, I'm intrigued. Before we begin, we wanted to let you guys know that we are about to make our way to Italy. The next time you see us, it'll be from the boot. You'll have to forgive us, we'll be traveling, we won't necessarily have a kitchen, so our apologies if there's an interruption in our midweekly recipes. However, stick around because we're gonna be showing you some really awesome stuff from our travels. Speaking of Bologna, I think that's on the itinerary. We will do something in Bologna. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you soon from Italy. So now Arper here we need to be focused because we need to cook. This is my lunch. So, what do you have in front of you? Yeah, you're right. Nothing that screams ragu alla bolognese to me. We've got salt, pepper, olive oil, some white wine, yeah. uh, whole peel tomatoes, spaghetti, which makes sense. Spaghetti alla bolognese. Onion, parsley, and a can of tuna. Yes, Arthur, because the real and official spaghetti alla bolognese are made with Tuna fish, and tuna fish in a can. Today we are going to use tuna fish in olive oil. I know that uh, in America there is a strange relationship between Americans and tuna fish. We Italians love our tuna fish in a can because we have a very high quality of tuna fish in a can, but believe me guys, Find uh, a good tuna fish and make this recipe because it deserves to be cooked and well known more or less everywhere. First step is uh, turn on the heat for the water. The second step is chop some onion. We don't need all that, so we need half of that onion. For our quantity that is for two person, we need a quart. If you are going to do more, you need a little bit more. We are using the onion because the onion is the ingredient written in the official recipe. But most of us Italian, we don't use the onion for this kind of dish. We use the garlic. So if you prefer a clove of garlic, feel free to use a clove of garlic. But we want to be here and very precise, so we cook with the onion. And also, Harper, another very interesting thing about this dish mm -hmm. is that it's not just the real spaghetti alla bolognese, but is the dish of every Italian student. Because when we go to the college, we are not rich. And for sure, in every apartment of students, you can find tomatoes, you can find the tuna in a can, you can find the olive oil, and you can find spaghetti. So it's also the official dish of the students. <laughs> so it's kind of like the Italian version of ramen noodles. I think so, Harper. Olive oil in the pan. Place the onion in the pan. Turn on the heat. Medium high, Harper. And now guess what we are looking for? Uh, we want the onion to be uh, slightly tender, slightly transparent. He's an expert of onion right now. It's like a sofrito. But I always like a sofrito. Yeah, tuna is interesting here. I mean, a lot of it is really kind of junky, which I think is why it's often kind of, I don't know, looked down upon. So now, Harper, because we use the our olive oil, you can drain the tuna. We don't need the olive oil from the tuna. Okay, the tuna's drained. Place, Harper, the tuna here with the onion. All right. Now, Harper, break the tuna a little bit, not too much, a little bit. So the flavor of the tuna and the flavor of the onion, they come all together. Some wine. It actually smells really good already. I know. <laughs> it smells really good. I know, I know. When the alcohol is completely evaporated, we add our tomatoes. Okay, I don't smell the wine anymore. 
three wool peel tomatoes. Add some juice. Now reduce the heat, low medium. Crush the tomatoes. Salt. Pepper. Pepper. A little bit of water. And now we let it cook while we cook our pasta because it's a very fast sauce. Okay. Salt the water. Salt the water. All right. If you guys are new here, this is the best tip I've ever learned about cooking pasta is not undersalting the water. It needs to taste like the sea. It will change your life. You will suddenly understand that pasta has flavor. I know that you like to mix. I know, I love to just stir. I know, but you don't really need that. I just feel like if I'm not mixing it, I'm, I don't know, I'm not cooking. I'm quite intentionally not even thinking about setting a timer for that pasta. Bravo, Harper, because finally you learned that the best way of cooking pasta is to try the pasta and understand when it's ready or not. <laughs> Let's see how well I do today. I don't want any of your help. I'm gonna see if I can do this. Hands off. Hands off. Let's uh, have here an exam. Okay. Because you are uh, going to Italy, so you need to be prepared. Otherwise, at the border, they will stop you and I will do <laughs> nothing. I will not help you to go in the country. Okay, what do you want to know? So I want to know, right now we have the pasta and the sauce. Mm -hmm. What do you need to do? I'm going to cook the pasta not until it's al dente, a little bit before it's al dente, maybe a minute before it's al dente. Then I'm gonna transfer the pasta into the sauce. I'm gonna mix it all together over heat, very important. We'll see, maybe add some pasta water to thin the sauce a little bit. And I'll, you know, cook it for a minute or two until the pasta's al dente and serve it. And why you do this? Because pasta and sauce are two integral parts of the same dish and they need to be cooked together. This is what we call mantecatura, the process that mm -hmm. allows the pasta to release the starch and create the cream without mm -hmm. cream. Every Italian pasta dish well made is given by this process. Harper, anyway, if I can give you a grade, like six. <laughs> six? Out no, of what? No, because Out of yeah, six? No, no. <laughs> because in Italy it's from one to ten. Oh, so six oh, is uh, That's sufficient. not great. No, it's sufficient. Sufficient. <laughs> what do you pretend? <laughs> Ooh, that's good. <laughs> that's yummy. I know that's yummy. You ate like that when you were in college? Always. Then you have also several variations on this recipe. Because for example, you can add a spoon of pesto. Oh. It's a very interesting variation, guys. You will be the judge. Two minutes. Two minutes to be ready to go in the pan. Two or... minutes to be ready to go into the pan. Wow. I'm gonna add a little more pasta water. <laughs> wow. That's good. Now oh, he's getting too nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Into the sauce, she goes. Stir it all together. What was it called? Manticatura? Manticatura, si, sí, Arper, manticatura. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask why there's no Parmigiano cheese out, and then I realized, Arper. ah, it's a fish dish. Arper. No cheese, huh? It's like the sixth grade that I gave you before, I will take out now. <laughs> We need also to say one thing here. The rule is that you don't put cheese on fish, but we have several exceptions, guys. For example, there is a very famous recipe. The name is uh, Amatriciana di Mare. Made with the same ingredient except uh, the guanciale. So they switch guanciale with octopus, but they put pecorino on top. Okay, my very first pasta with tuna fish. You're maybe very first spaghetti alla bolognese, Arper. <laughs> That's true. So, we need to try. Yes. Arper? Yeah. 
I will go with this. <laughs> you don't know how many times uh, when you are a student in Italy you do this. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, do you feel like you're back in school? Absolutely. <laughs> bon, bon appetito. appetito. Wow. Now, tell me that the uh, students in Italy, they don't eat very well. I wish I didn't have that good when I was in college. There you have it, folks, the real spaghetti alla bolognese. Give the recipe a shot. If you do, tag us in a picture on Instagram or Facebook, at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see what you come up with. We'll see you guys soon from Italy. We can't wait to show you what we're up to. Sarper, it's time to prepare the luggage. Let's yes, go. Yes, let's go. Ciao, guys. Ciao.